Aleluya. Did you receive my the invitation, the call? No. Okay, just log in. Okay. Yeah, I don't know about the issue, but yeah, I will try to figure it out later. Okay, no worries. Let me invite others. Good morning. Just um, begin by thanking God for what He has done. Thank Him for the past few, past few hours, past few weeks, for the past few months, for the past few years. Uh, Father, we give you praise. Thank you for everything you've done for us. Thank you, Father, for your faithfulness, your loving kindness, your, your goodness. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we exalt your name because you are a glory of his king. You are worthy to be praised. You are worthy to be adored. You are worthy to be lifted up. You are king above all kings in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we exalt you. Be thou exalted. Be thou magnified. Be thou glorified. Be thou lifted up. You are a good God. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We appreciate you, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father, for your faithfulness. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Now, let's begin to invite the presence of the Holy Spirit to our meeting this morning. In the name of Jesus Christ, let's invite the presence of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, you are welcome. You are welcome. You are welcome to our meeting. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for joining us. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for being part of us today. We give you praise. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. 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 Then the next thing is that let's quickly pray that, the, that we stand justified in the presence of God. That in the name of Jesus Christ, our sins have been forgiven. We are, we are forgiven and we are received. And we receive the gift of um, forgiveness in the name of Jesus Christ. This morning, we claim our forgiveness. We claim our right to enter the presence of our Father. This morning, thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we pray. Now, let's extend the same forgiveness to others that they are forgiven. They are forgiven forever in the name of Jesus Christ. Let's release people to their destiny so that our prayer will not, will not be in that in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Our prayer cannot be in that because we are forgiven. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Now, this morning, 
Let's begin to like uh, control the atmosphere of the, our of our house, of our street, of our our town, of our city, of our nation, of our region. That in the name of Jesus Christ, we bring every contrary force, every evil force, every force of darkness under subjection, because we pray this morning the forces of Satan they are held in bondage in the name of Jesus Christ. We claim our right. We want to penetrate the heaven. We want to approach the heaven. We want to have access to the heaven in the name of Jesus. Let's condemn Satan. Let's condemn the evil forces in the dust. As long as we have this meeting, that they'll be subjected under our authority in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. This morning, we claim our right. We authorize. We claim our what we have been authorized to do, that in the name of Jesus Christ, the Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we control every spiritual atmosphere. Oh, in the name of Jesus Christ, let our prayers, our word, the sermon, be unhindered by any evil force. And we pray against hindrance from evil force. Our word penetrates the heaven. Our word penetrates the cloud. Our word penetrates the heart of people. In the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, this our word will not be subject to satanic manip manipulation. Our words mean will not be subject to satanic manipulations in the name of Jesus Christ. Our word will not be subject to satanic manipulations in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Achala. Mm. All right. So today. We're going to talk about how to grow in your relationship with God. Okay. Amen. So, I think this is very, very important. Um, I'll do my best, and then <laughs> one day, you know, I'll, our brother Paul will, Dr. John can go in it more in depth as well. <laughs> I think it's a very important topic for us. So how how we should grow, you know, um, in our relationship with God spiritually. Um, so this thing um, let me talk about, you know, how to grow in in a spiritual in a relationship with God. First thing will come into my mind when you accept Jesus as your savior, when you believe in Him. But as as a Christian. That we have to be submission, submit, submit, submit our our life to God, like you know, have a fully submission to God. It's very, very important as Christian. Um, um, that you know, when you accept God, you submit yourself fully to Him, like everything. You have to submit everything that you know involve your life, anything that you you have to submit it to God. Um. That's the first aspect um, we need as Christians to do, to submit to God. Second thing um, that important is obedience. It's very, very important that as um, in our relationship with God that we, for us to be obedient. That's what God wants us to do, to be, to be obedient, submission, to, to his word, to him. And that's how the, the, the start of our relationship was God to start from there. Um, basically, you cannot, like, you cannot have um, a relationship with someone and you cannot be submit to that person or you cannot be obedient to that person. Otherwise, it will not work. Um, we have to put God our, you know, the head of our life, the head. Um, like in Rome, um, like it's, um, like in First Thessalonians five, as you know, uh, sixteen nineteen, Paul was saying that to to wife to submit to the husband, as we submit to Christ. So he's he's he's, he's, he's linking, he's describing it. You know why we have to submit to the high authority to God. You know. That's that, that's the principle in a relationship that we have to submit 
complain to God. Even though, you know, there, there will be, it will not be like, you know, all perfect, but then, you know, we know that submission is very important. And then obedience to God. In, in John 14, 23, if we can just open that just quickly, read um, something a little bit about, So it's John 14. Okay. I'll just read from verse 23. 23, okay. John 14, 23. Mm -hmm. uh, Jesus answered and said to him, If anyone loves me, he will keep my word, and my father will love him, and we will come to him and make our home with him. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Very clear. Um, I, I, I Jesus replied there, if anyone love me, he will obey my teaching. My father will love him and we will come to him and make, we we'll just, you know, remember that and make our home with him. So not my home, but our home. So basically here that by obeying God, by, you know, his, his way, his um, teaching, automatically you are in, you know, in a relationship. So the principle here that to obey God word in order to, you know, for your relationship, you know, to grow, to go further. So those two things, um, I believe it's very important for us as a Christian, and especially when it's the, the, the minute that we are born again, we need to submit to God fully and mm -hmm. obedience because you know like if you do not submit completely and you try you know like um there is some Christians do that they will they will accept uh Christ they will say they're born again but then it's still you know mm -hmm. they're not fully submitted mm -hmm. you know I, it is it's not easy sometimes to you know to to break some habit like when you come to Christ or to break something that, you know, you used to do. But then as a child, you need to be obedient to God. Like if you are a child, if you have your parents or your father, you'll be very obedient to, to, to your father. You will follow his instruction. It's the same way, even though when it is even if it is what you do, but you, you know, you're still going to obey. It is, uh, discipline. Is the way God, you know, teach so, even though you know maybe it would, it would feel um harsh first, but then it's for our own good. Um so um we're gonna start from book of Peter, first Peter. Okay. First Peter um, two. Yes, um, verse Peter 2, verse 2 to 3. It's only what two verse. First Peter chapter 2. Yeah, verse 2 to 3. Verse 2 to, sorry. Mm. 2 to 3? Yep. Okay, I read. Like newborn babies, you must crave pure spiritual milk so that you will grow into a full experience of salvation. Cry out for this nourishment, now that you have had a taste of the Lord's kindness. Hallelujah. Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. So this is here Paul is speaking, I mean Peter, that for us as to be, you know, to grow, we have to grieve for your spiritual milk. When we talk about child, when a child born, child have nothing except milk. That's the only thing a child need. Mm. Milk. Yeah. It's the same thing as Christian when we are born again. If you don't, we have to pray for the word of God. We have to have that, you know, mm. test for it. That's the element of growing in a relationship with God. You know, a child, when, um, when he, one, uh, a mother milk when he's born, that actually is, you know, make them help them to grow strong, strong, healthy. 
um, if a child does not, does not drink milk when he was born a baby, is that child will not be healthy. He will not even no. Will not even start to sit. Will not even start to crawl. Will not even do anything. That basically have there is a problem. Hmm. So as Christian, we have to pray for the word of God. We need to have that hunger, and then through that milk, we're gonna nourish ourselves. Mm-hmm. Which means that we're gonna grow up in our salvation. And 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 Peter says that since that you since that you have tested, God is good. If if, mm-hmm. if you tested the milk of, of the mother, it tastes <laughs> mm-hmm. really I don't know horrible. <laughs> That's how I'm thinking. But then it look. A child loves that milk. Mm. Ah, that milk, oh my lord. Like a child, like any child is born can go two years with that milk, doesn't care. Will not even feel bad. You know, like mm. oh, that's that's gross. No. That's how as Christian we need to do that. Since we come to Christ, accept Christ in our life, we submit to him, we uh, become obedient to his word. Mm. You know, then we have to um, feed ourselves with the word of God every day. We have to have time to spend in the word of God. We have to have time to sit down and read the word of God in, you know, for, in order for us to grow, for our born to grow and you know, to be strong. Without the word of God, we cannot grow in relationship with God mm-hmm. because that, that's the, the way God communicates with us mm-hmm. is through his word. God can communicate in any other way, but then, you know, with his word that he communicate with that all the time, if we follow and, and obey his word, um, obey him. Um, so the, the, the next thing I'm going to talk about as well is in Ephesians 6, 10, we're going to talk a little bit about, first about the word, the importance of us to grow spiritually, we need the word of God. We went to Ephesians 6, verse 10. Finally, my brother, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Amen. Amen. And then um, just go a bit, a little bit. Put on, the, put on the old armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 It is very, very clear that, you know, um, Paul was um, encouraging, you know, uh, the people of Thessalonica that it is, um, I mean, efficient, um, uh, efficient, that it's important for us, you know, to, 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 to grow in the word of God, to, to you know, to feed ourselves and the the reason is that, you know, when you are grow, when you are strong, there is so likely that you will fall. Hmm. It's small chance for you to, to tremble and fall. Hmm. This is describing us that it's important for us, for them that we have to, you know, put, you know, when, when he, he, like when you read the whole, the whole chapter, it's talking, describing basically, you know, how the army is supposed to be. If you are, if you are born in, in, in Christ, you, straight away you're an army. Hmm. And then you have to know that the devil is going to, you know, fight you. Hmm. And then as an army, you have to stand in your defense. Hmm. That's the job of an army. That you have to be, you know, you know ready for the war. You cannot, you cannot say, ah, you know, I wasn't ready. It just, you know, came from nowhere. I wasn't ready. As an army, you have to be ready 24 hours. You know, if, if, if a soldier, if, if you are at home on holiday and then there was war happened somewhere, they can call you straight away. You have to attend. No excuse. That's just the rules. You have to attend. That's the same thing with, the, with, with, with us as Christians, as children of God. We have to be ready anytime when the devil tries to attack us. That's why Paul was saying that you have to wear the arms of, you know, of the word of God, which is mean that you have to put helmet, you have to put like all the, the, the outfit. Hmm. Of, of a soldier and that's the word of God if, if, if the enemy tries to attack you from this way you know what to, what to respond or how to defend to cover if he tries to attack you from there you know you are ready 24 hours 
uh, for for for, for any attack the enemy Amen. try to attack. Amen. Okay? Amen. Um, yesterday we talked about you know the how like the how we have authority, how we have power. You know, God has given us, and that's the time we use that that authority. I I, I love when 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 Jesus was in the in the boat, and then when the wind was was there. You know, at that time, the, the, the disciples did not know that they have power in them. They did they didn't not realize that they have authority. Hmm. When the winds, they then all, all they did was trying just to scream and call on God, on Jesus, you know? And Jesus, like you, was, you know, with, um, with no faith. Hmm. You know, why? And then Jesus just, one thing, he just rebuked, rebuked the, the, the wind, and the wind was settled. I know the enemy, when if I mean if the, the the disciple has done that, they will have you know rebuke that wind, everything will settle. Mm. The same thing with us Christian. We need to have you know that we have to know that we have authority and power. You know the enemy can come and say something in your mind, you know throw some stuff. But then if you spoke, you say devil, I rebuke and now in Jesus mighty name, you leave me alone. Mm. I will you know you have no power. You not have authority over me. It's straight away. You will see the change. You see that thought, you know, is gone. But then the Bible also says we need to renew our mind. Mind. You know, which is mean that if some negative thought comes in your mind, if some anything comes to tempt you, you have to have a strategy ready. Because the devil will not wait for you. He will just keep throwing and throwing. You have to have, you know, if you're thinking for something really that negative, um, really bad, you know, you know. It start maybe singing, worship God, declare, you know, rebuke that that voice, but then do an action as well. Amen. Start singing, worship, you know, worship the, um, God. Uh, grab the Bible and read something. Mm -hmm. So try to renew your mind, you know. Say, you can, like, you cannot just, you know, you can rebuke it, but then if you do not take action, you know, the thought will come back again. Mm -hmm. The devil, you know, it's rolling around trying to what? To steal, to kill, and to destroy. And to destroy. That means it's around. He cannot, you know, just, you know, go. He will come back again. That's the same thing with when we say in Matthew, when, when, when someone be delivered, you know, if you do not fill up your house, you left it just empty, he will, the devil will, come, will go and bring seven other, even worse, and they will come and say, and that's a lot of you know, Christians what they, uh, happening to them. They will accept God now, and you know that's it. They will never try to revival. They never want to spend time in God presence. They would never want to pray. But, you know, the, the fact that they deliver, that's it. They say they are free. But tomorrow you find them in the line waiting to be delivered again. You're just like, what's going on? Is this person being delivered last forever? <laughs> Every occasion they want deliverance. So that's not the way God wants us to, you know. He want, when, we, when we accepted God that we have to submit to him, um, when I say about submission, you know, it's basically that because, you know, we, don't, we, we, we have no power to change our own way in, in ourselves by ourselves. Mm. By submitting, we're telling God, mm. you know me from inside and out. You know everything. You know my weakness. You know my strength. So I submit everything to you. I want you to lead me. I want you to, you know, guide me. I want you God to discipline me. I want you God to, you know, open my eyes to see the things that I need to be changed in my life. Uh, God, I want you to strengthen me. You know, so you give them fully control. You know, I, I like when we describe when you know when we when we got talked to Nicodemus. In order to be crazy, you have to be born again. You have to start from that when you are a baby, you know? To be born again, it doesn't mean to go to your stomach, to your mommy's stomach. And, but then when he was saying to, born, to be born again, to be renewed completely and clean, you know, to be a new, like a baby, when a baby comes, you know, he has nothing wrong. He's clean and everything. But then he has to take a step to grow, um, to start sitting, to start crawling, to start, you know, have that journey. There will be fallings. You know, he will try to stand up, he will fall, but then he will get up, he will do, you know, and, but then he's, he's growing in front of his father, who's, you know, looking after that child, well being. 
you know and then you know a child does not have concern usually the you know the parents will take concern for the child so if anything you know they are happen the parents is the one who will give consent because the child have no consent mm. is this that's the, the same thing that we are under god authority we are submit to him in each, in everything um the, um that in our you know consider our life and then we have to be obedient of course so when we talk about um goes as well in uh first Corinthians 3 first Corinthians 3 this Verse 1 to 3. Okay, read. Yeah. And I, brethren, could not speak to you as to spiritual people, but as to carnal, as to babes in Christ. I fed you with milk and not with solid food, for until now you were not able to receive it, and even now you are still not able, for you are, are still carnal, for hmm. they have envy, strife, division among you. Are you not carnal and behaving like men? Amen. Mm. Amen. Amen. So that Paul talking to the Corinthians people, you know, they accepted God, but they're not growing. It's spiritually, they're not growing. Paul here has addressed them. It's, you know, it's like, as you spiritual, but as you worldly mind, it says, um, you still worldly. From one to three. It said, but I could not address you as a spiritual, but as worldly married infant, like children in Christ. I gave you milk, not a solid food. For you are not yet ready for it. Indeed, you are still not ready. You are still worldly for sin. There is, you know. So if 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 as Christian, if we accept Christ. And then we're still doing the same thing we used to do. You know? We still continue to do that we used to do. We are not grown. You know? God will not replace you know, anything on... He's not going to trust us with anything. You know, that, that's why the Bible says we need to grow, you know, mature, you know? You cannot be a child from, from today until 20 years. There is nothing like that. We, we know um, we need to grow spiritually. We start with the milk. That's what Paul is saying, that I'll give you milk. But then, you know, there is solid food as well. And then when there is solid food, that, that's when that, you know, you, 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 you're able and then you are responsible. You become responsible. That's the thing, you know, when, when we grow adult or teenagers, there now you have to take some responsibility. You cannot go and sin and then come back and say, you know, ah, uh, you know, and then tomorrow go and do it again and say, I, you know, try to make excuse. No. You have been fed milk, mm -hmm. which means that now you know the Bible. You need now to take action that you have to go through the Bible. You have to, you know, even deliver, you can deliver yourself. Mm -hmm. Amen. No? Amen. Some people say, you know, that they, you know, they need a deliverance from someone to come and deliver them. You know, there is some some stuff, but then you have the you have the capacity, you have the ability as a child of God to deliver yourself. Mm -hmm. There's Amen. nothing you know impossible Amen. if you believe in Amen. God. You have faith and you know that God has given you authority. You Amen. can deliver yourself. Amen. It just, I mean, sometimes I get so frustrated when I, see, I find, you know, like you find Christian that maybe twenty years. They've been born again in God. But, you know, when it comes to the, 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 the just simple thing, you know, like anger, um, it's not a simple thing, sorry. It is bad, um, something that we need to be delivered. Like anger, you know, uh, not to forgive, you know. People find it hard to, to do it. And I just keep wondering, like, sometimes I'm like, why, though? Since you accept all God, you know, all this you've been, you know, probably reading or hearing or people have been talking about it. How, how hard can you forgive? You cannot, you know, just forgive someone. Like if you go to the church, you find people Christian, they don't talk to each other. They're in the same church, they pray, 
But then, you know, they don't talk to each other, don't even greet each other. I'm just like, that's, re that's really sad. Like, all this year, you, would ne you never heard about, you know, the importance of forgiveness. You never heard that, you know, you, ne you never read about it. I'm sure you did. But then because we don't, we don't want to obey God, we don't want to be obedience to God. Hmm. It's stubborn in our, in, our, in our head. And then they would say that it's really, really very hard. There is nothing is hard. If Christ, Jesus, when we're still sinners, he came and died for us, for our sin, and forgive us, that is hard. If we speak how many times we sin in a day, or how many, you know, how much you've been sinning since, you know, and he's able to forgive us. How can you not forgive you only, you know, your, your brother or your sister? And then you, you know, you go to church together, you pray together, and then you just don't want to talk about, you talk together, you don't even want to agree. You know, that's the, that's the kind of people they don't want to grow. They still want to stay in milk. Mm. They don't want to have solid feet. They just want to stay in milk. They're still living, you know, have there and have there. Jealousy. It's stuff like that. You know, when, when, when Paul listed all this stuff, you know, those are stuff as a Christian, we shouldn't have it. Because we're submitted to God fully, which means that when you realize you have that weakness, you go to God, God, that's my weakness. Help me. To overcome them and trust me Amen. God will lead you God will set you free from that thing if you sincerely from your heart you want it if you see that you know you actually wanted to be like like God God say I am holy so you need to be holy too if that's the, the thing is that we, we need to be holy as God we need to represent God we need to you know people to see God in us that means we have to take every effort to change. You know, you cannot be in Christ from day one to 20 years. You do not grow. You do not change your habit. You still, you know, do the same thing. You know, it's, it's just, it's, it's not, it's not acceptable. Mm -hmm. You know, that's mean that you cannot say that, you know, I'm really, you know, um, I'm weak or I'm, you know, I know that it, it, it's true. The devil tempts us, the devil, you know, do things that, but then, you know, the devil does not force us to do it. Like it does not tell you, you know, that he will present you, uh, the devil will present the idea. Like how the devil, um, he tempted Eve and Adam. He did not tell them, you know, go and eat that apple. Is that, he didn't. And God will not do the same. God will not even, you know, you know, has to do something, you know, by force. But then he, the devil would bring you the suggestion, would bring you the ideas, and you know, and then would let you by yourself hmm. convince yourself into it and go and do it. Hmm. You know, it says you cannot be slave. Like um, the Bible says, you cannot be slave to something at least, you know, you have accepted it. Hmm. Yeah. If the devil tempted you, you, you know. It, until you accept it to do it, you know, then you are fully responsible for it. Mm -hmm. There is things that I know that, you know, sometimes it happened, you know, for let's say that, um, let's, you know, like in there is situation, like us, all Christians go through mm -hmm. that, you know, you know, you can, you can, you can ha do something that just suddenly, for example, maybe, uh, accidentally, you just say something from your mouth, you know, you're not meant to, mm -hmm. you know, that's, that's, that, that's, that's, you know, okay. But then there is people who do th the same thing day, tomorrow, repeatedly. Mm -hmm. Like, um, what are you going to, like, how, how are we going to respond to that? That, um, you know, I cannot, you know, I don't know. No. You have all the tools. You have everything God given you, the word, the Bible, you know, you have, you have to use them. And then we went to the second thing that important, important for us as Christians as well to grow in our relationship that we don't forget is prayer. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 Prayer is very, very, very important for us to grow in our relationship because it's not uh, just prayer talk and stuff. 
but then that's the way of us to communicate with God, to, you know, hear from him, to receive, you know, guidance from him. So prayer is very important in our relationship with God. It's like communication. You know, if you are in relationship with someone, you have to communicate. If you don't communicate, that relationship will mm. definitely yeah, you know, just die or fall. So communication is very important. And that's why we, we as, as, as Christians, we have to pray daily, every day. So in, 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 in just first Thessalonians 5, if we read from verse... First Thessalonians 5. Yep, and verse 16. 16. Rejoice always and pray without ceasing. In everything, give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Amen. 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 Mm. And then 19, he said, Do not quench the spirit. Amen. Amen. So, mine it says here, Do not put out the fire, mm. do not put out the spirit fire. Mm. Um, be joyful always, pray constantly, give thanks to in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Um, um, that's that when it comes to you know, the, um, uh, that's when it comes uh, like when you say that, pray joyful, pray constantly, give thanks in all circumstances, in all circumstances, amen. Amen. So, as, as children of God, you know, in any circumstance, we need to pray. Doesn't matter you are you are sad, you are disappointed, you are hurt, whatever the situation. In any circumstances, you need to pray. That's the only way you can grow, and you can move move forward with your relationship with God. Amen. 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 Some people will pray only when there is. Difficult situation, they cannot even, you don't know, they don't even know what to, like when everything is good, when they're all happy, like everything working well, they don't, they don't even have time to pray. They don't even have time to sit and read the Bible. But when something happened badly, when, when, when there is, you know, sickness or there is struggle somewhere, they start praying. They even will start fasting. They will start going to church that Sunday, you know, but as you are a child of God, you know that you are a child of God, you know that you submit. Because when you submit to someone that, you know, basically when you, when you submit and be obedient to someone, you have faith in that person. Fully faith. Not just belief, faith. Believe that, you know, belief is, is you know, you accept it. But then when you have faith, that means, you know, you trust that person with everything. Whether, whether, whether the situation will change, whether the situation will not change, you trust him that in him is only the answer. That Jesus is the only answer. Sometimes we pray very high, sometimes we pray very low. That's what Paul said, do not put out the, the spirit fire. There is always have to be that fire in our prayer. When we pray, we always have to pray, you know, Amen. as we mean it. Amen. I know sometimes, you know, even me sometimes when I want to go to bed, sometimes I just pray, you know, two sword because I'm lazy. And pip, they sleep. And then when, you know, I'm you know, going through, you know, the tough time, I can stay up and pray <laughs> for long. Oh, no. That's the stuff that is, you know, it's not meant to. It's not, it's like we, you know, we, we, we say, God, we want you only, you know, you know, when I'm really bad. But then, you know, it, 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 prayer is not always about, you know, you coming for God with issue. No. Prayer is, you know, we come with, with to, to just give thanks to God, just to worship Him, just to sit there and just sing and worship God. You, you know, you're good. Thank you. Sometimes you don't have any, you don't need to ask God about anything. In particular, only just to, to just to worship his name, how great he is. It, that, 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 that's a prayer. It's because you're, you're in relationship with that person, you know, 
It's not always that you just give me, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me. But you just sometimes you just want to just, uh, just, I don't know, just look at, you know, like if you have a, a boyfriend or girlfriend, you just look at them, it's like, oh, how beautiful they are. Just look at, you know, the feature and stuff. That's, you know, that's how we have to feel about God. We, you know, we don't have to come to, you know, God just because we need something, because we need, no, just sometimes we just, you just sit there, even if you, even if you're, okay, you, you don't want to talk, you, you just sit there and see, worship, and you find some word flowing out of your mouth, you know, with joy. It's not even, you know, thinking, you start talking to God, you know, thank you, Lord, you are great. You remember the goodness of God, everything that, he, you know, he done already. Doesn't matter what uh, what is going to do next, but that everything that he done for you to be where you are. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. So it's very very important to us Christian, basically, is to 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 grow when um to grow maturity to 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 grow in our relationship with God is is very simple. That we have to read our Bible, we have to read the Word of God, we have to submit to God everything to be obedience. God, you know, no, no, no parents would like child that disobedient, who does not listen. That you know, the father they will tell him do this, they will go and do something different. God wants us to be obedience to Him, even encourage us to be obedient to the law. Yes. General law, you know, the law of the land. Mm -hmm. But you know, in, you know, he advised us to obey to them because you know that's where you become righteous. Mm -hmm. When you submit to something and you you know when you submit to to the law or be obedient to that law, you know, that means you know the Paul say you know when you submit to like when you when you submit to the law or you obey to the law, that means that law is good. It's not bad thing. When he's telling the Israel, but the not, you know, uh, the only thing he did not like about the, you know the Israel that because they they start you know taking the law as you know to live with the law, but they forgot actually the relationship with God as you know aspect. So they they they, they, they take the law to be like the culture, they do you know everything you know, but the relationship with God is become you know. To them, it's just practical of doing, you know, traditional stuff and follow the law. But the law is good. It makes it make us to, you know, to know right and wrong. To it directs us to stay in track with God. But then it's, our relationship with God has to be, you know, with communication by reading the Word of God. And then by reading the Word of God, we grow. We, we start to know, and then God will trust us with, with bigger things. God doesn't want us to stay children all, all our life. He will not give us, you know, assessment, assignment to do. He will not tell us, you know, you know, do that and do that because we're not mature. He wants us to be mature, you know, that he can use us in many ways. He can use us to do things, you know, Amen. Amen. For, uh, for, for him. He said that you are the light of the world. For I am the light. We mean we are. We have to walk with Christ hand on hand, together like that. We cannot, be, you know, be apart from Him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So, just today, my, my encouragement is, you know, you know, like when we are accepted, God, that we, it's important that we. Be submission. We have to be obedience to God's word, and then we need to pray constantly. We need to read the word of God, spend time in in God present. Um, just let Him speak to us, let Him direct us, and then it's very important also for us to. Um, I like it. I like, I like to call like check yourself, search yourself, you know, or just, uh, say the Holy Spirit. Is, Try to search me, you know, for things that, you know, that, that I need to change to me. Holy Spirit can pick it up for you like that. You might be, you know, there is a small thing sometimes we don't even pay attention to. 
you know, like when we are born again. We just, when we're born again, we say, okay, everything is perfect. I'm born again now. I'm clean, nothing, you know. But then you have to work on your character, mm. you know, through, through the Holy Spirit. You may have a problem, you know, giving, and you just think that, uh, you know, you never know, pension to that. But suddenly God will reveal that to you if you say, God, you know, I want I want to know more of you. I want you got to 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 open my eyes spiritually to see things that unseen in me, that I may know you know things. You may have you know um, a spirit of lie. You 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 lie a lot. You may you may think that you know you don't. Sometimes the devil will, will close our eyes spiritually. We don't see those stuff in us. But then when you tell the you know ask God and then let the Holy Spirit reveal to you areas that need to be changed that you will to develop yourself better, you know, to be, you know, to be as God wants you to be, it, the Holy Spirit will open your eyes and you start to see things. I, I, me, like when I, when I become born again, you know, when I start walking with God, I always pray that, you know, and every time there is, you know, that I need to walk on it. It could be habit, I need actually to pray and break it. Um, I, um, so, you know, uh, to break myself free from it. So I always ask the Holy Spirit, uh, God, reveal for me something that I need to change, you know. Reveal for me, Lord God, that, that, you know, my weakness area, you know, place that I'm really weaker, that, you know, I may, you know, walk in it to strengthen them. Since God is the, the source of my strength. You know, that's how we're going to we grow, you know, in our relationship with God, that we need to, add, you know, submit to him and ask him to open eyes to see how we can grow because when you are when if you are born like that you will not definitely not automatically gonna be prophet in anything and there is no one prophet or no one you know um without sin but with with god we can walk and build our relationship with god and we start trusting him then you know we will know how to be like god still we're still human we will fall today but we're gonna you know get up again and move. The Bible said the righteous men fall seven times, but it will get up, will you know stand again. So it's all about just you know have the give giving giving yourself to God completely. Submit to self fully. Like don't hold some stuff back, but submit and be obedient. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So um we've got 15 minutes. Um I think we'll take that to pray and then um if one have a question or addition no i think um yeah you can move on so um we're just gonna pray if um anyone have a, another i mean prayer point that we need to pray about no, i think uh we should just go ahead with uh uh, coming out a uh, blessing that we'll do every morning. Or do you, do you have any prayer points uh, at all that yeah. you want to read? No, really. Not we'll really. just pray that you know that. Okay. Uh, all right. Grow up to know him. Mm. All right. So let's quickly you know, begin to pray that um, she has talked about a lot of things. Don't, you know, the word of God, if you want to grow, you need to continually on daily basis feed on the word of God. You need to be obedient. You need to decide to grow. You know, and that is what this group is. So before we move on, we just quickly in our like appreciate the presence of a first time comma in our midst today. Uh, our name is uh, Oma Balaji. Okay, can you quickly just introduce yourself to us and we welcome her? Can you hear us? Uh, Hi, Sister Oma Balaji. <laughs> Tommy's mom, we're welcome. Okay, she welcome. can hear. Oh, okay, <laughs> can you quickly just introduce yourself briefly? Oh, she can't hear it. Don't worry. So let's move on to Psalm 20. You go to Psalm 20. Let's open our Bible to the book of Psalm, Psalm 20. So I declare this word into your life that in the name of Jesus Christ, I stand on the authority of the name of Jesus Christ. I stand on the authority of the word of God. I stand on the authority of the blood of Jesus Christ. I speak 
as the oracle of God this morning. I'll speak as the mouthpiece of God this morning that in the name of Jesus Christ, I declare the following blessing into your life. Psalm 20, may the Lord answer you in the day of trouble in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I into your life, whether you are in trouble or not, anytime you call upon God, you'll be answered in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. May the name of the God of Jacob defend you in every situation in the name of Jesus Christ. When you cannot defend yourself, when you, ca- you are in defensible the name of the god of jacob will defend you in the name of jesus christ may he send you help may he send you help may god send you help from his sanctuary and strengthen you out of zion in the name of jesus christ may he remember all your offerings in the name of jesus and accept your bond sacrifice in jesus name any way that you have sacrificed you have sold your time sold your seed sold everything your effort in the name to the kingdom of god today you will reap harvest in the name of jesus christ 30 fold 60 fold and 100 fold in the name of jesus christ may he grant you may god grant you according to your heart desire i speak into your life this morning because you have aligned your desire towards god you have aligned your desire your goals, your, 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 your driving force in life towards God. I declare into your life, may He grant you your heart desire according to your heart desire in the name of Jesus Christ and fulfill your purpose today in the name of Jesus Christ. God, will anything you set your hand to do today will prosper in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Every righteous thing, every godly thing you set your hand to do today will prosper in the name of jesus christ i declare into your life that people will rush over you people will compete with themselves to favor you in the name of jesus christ everywhere you go today you are loved you are accepted you are respected and you are assisted in the name of jesus christ grant you according to the desire of her and fulfill the purpose of your heart we will rejoice in your salvation that in the name of jesus christ joy happiness will be your portion today in the name of jesus christ Amen. because you have been saved because you have the salvation that came through jesus christ i declare you will rejoice throughout today in the name of jesus christ and Amen. in the name of our god we will set up our banner may the lord fulfill all your petitions in jesus name Amen. 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 Now I know that the Lord's seed is anointed because you are anointed, because you are separated, because you have made yourself righteous, because you have accepted the gift of forgiveness, because you have accepted the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. I declare you anointed today in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. You are anointed to go to your work. You are anointed for your education. You are anointed for your business. You are anointed Amen. for your studies. You are anointed for your Amen. career. You are anointed Amen. for your, the, the training of, of your children. You are anointed in every area of your life in the name of Jesus Christ. What does anointing mean? The grace to prosper. It also means the grace to prosper. I declare into your life today, you will not struggle to prosper in your business in the name of Jesus Christ. You will not struggle to prosper in your academics in the name of Jesus Christ. You will not struggle to prosper in your career in the name of Jesus Christ. God will answer, okay, he will answer in from the holy heaven with the saving strength of his right hand. Some trust in chariot and some in horses, but we remember the name of our Lord in the name of Jesus Christ. Yes. Today, when you need God, you will remember him the name of Jesus Christ. Yes. Anxiety, worries, and depression will not take you away from God in Jesus' name. Yes. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. So this morning, let's just begin to thank God to say, Father, we exalt you for everything you've done to us, for everything. We give thanks to God, giving thanks to God, having that sense of gratitude, the attitude of God, and say, Father, we exalt you. We thank you for everything you've done for us, for provision, for, for your goodness. God is a good God. God is a good God for everything, for protection, for bringing us this far in life. Thank you, Father. Let's begin to exalt God in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, you are exalted. Father, you are exalted. We give you praise this morning for everything you've done, for everything you've done for us in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. 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 So let me just take this opportunity to um, like ex- explain the vision of this group. You know, people that are joining us, especially when they join us every day. Um, so that they will know what we're doing and who we have. This Oceanic Revival Group is a platform for spiritual growth. 
you know, one of the things I noticed is that when people, because the way the Western world is, is very busy. We really have time to do things. We rush in and rush out. Everybody, you know, just on the way. Everybody is busy. So, like, what, what can we do? So, that, okay, let's set up a revival group that is specifically based on technology, you know, that we we'll pray in the morning, we do everything even from the comfort of our home and we don't need to leave our houses. We can share the word of God, we can pray, we can do a lot of things. So that's why we, so it's a training ground where you get fed with the word of God, where you get fed, you can pray with other people and we expect you to grow. By this time you spend three, six, nine months, one year, in this group, we expect you to be expand in every area of your life. We want your life to change, your attitude to the word of God, your attitude to life to change. So that's why we are gathered. So uh, you are welcome, everybody. I can see another person that is joining us. Your name is iPhone. I, I do. <laughs> iPhone. Um, if you're there, if you can hear you, can, can you just say hello to us and introduce yourself? Uh, sorry, it's Naomi. Okay. Uh, um, my phone had a problem, so I just uh, was <laughs> okay. Nice iPhone there. So, sorry. Sorry. Yeah, right now. Okay. Yeah. Right. Good morning. So, yeah. Good morning. And say hi to us too. <laughs> anyway, anyway, you're welcome. Whether iPhone or Naomi, it's the same thing. <laughs> we know okay. you. Hello. Okay. All right. So, thank you. Thank you for joining us. Um, any any contribution today? Any things you want us to pray about? Uh, yes, uh, or anyone, you, Naomi, or any other person that you want us to pray about before we close. Um, yes, let's pray for good health. Mm. Mm. Um, yeah. Okay, let's pray for every, ourselves and every member of this group. For, for health, you know, for good health, for sound health, for divine health in the name of that God will strengthen our bones, strengthen our, our, our skeleton, skeleton, strengthen every part of us that let the divine power of God flow from our spirit into our body. Let's begin to pray in the name of Jesus Christ. This morning, Father, we pray, O oh God, that you also, that we ask, O oh God, that you strengthen our mortal body, you are quicken our mortal body and give us strength and give us health in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, in the, we pray for good health, divine health, divine healing in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Let's let us share the grace in fellowship. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, God, goodness, and mercy are following us. All the days of our life, and we'll continue to do it and so forth forever and ever. Amen. 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 See you tomorrow. Have a great day. Thank you, Achala, Helen, Naomi. Have a nice day. Hello, Sister Helen. Hello, Sister Achala. <laughs> You're the ones I've not said hi to. <laughs> and Liz. Is there. Yeah, Helen, how are you? I'm good. How are you? Yeah, good. Thank you. Uh, you guys have a blessed day. Blessed day too.